so not a great way to start the four-game series in Detroit. A rough night for Lucas Giolito. Seven walks for Gio. Four runs from three and two-thirds. Alex Fajardo, no walks. Ten Ks for the Tigers, and the White Sox lose it seven to two. It is Super White Sox Post Game Live here with the legend Ozzy Guillen. I'm Chuck Garfine. My Twitter feed. Woo! Why? White Sox fans. Why? Simmer oh, no, yeah, no, wait, wait a minute. Simmer White Sox down. fans like you. They get too excited when they win. They get so salty when so they I'm lose. Just, I mean, this was a bad game. The Sox had won seven of nine. And I just sent out a little tweet about a half hour ago. And man, Bay, the venom. Bay, the venom. By the way, that's the way they started in, in Cleveland. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, like, it's a... Why you, you, why you put in your tweet? Oh, I just said, hey, the Sox should be down. They should be getting blown out right now. Yeah. Um, the Tigers have left 12 men on base, but the White Sox only have three hits. Yes. And, I mean, they weren't attacking me, I don't think. They were more attacking, like, just the White Sox and criticizing the Sox. They should be, this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong, and everything's bad. You guys right. <laughs> Thousand percent. <laughs> I guess my point is, is this, yeah, this game stunk. But they were saying the Sox still suck. And it's like, well, you know what? They won 7 of 9. They're starting to play better. This was a bad game. Let's not make any absolute calls on who this team is after a bad game in Detroit. Now, if they lose two more, I'm with you. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I say when I made the comment. When I was in 6, 7 years score uh, this week, I say, they asked me about this ball club. Are you excited about it? I said, yeah. yes, I am. I'm not lying. I am, yes. But they said, give me your say. Nope, I got to wait another week. Yeah. I got to wait another week to get, I can say, you yeah. know what, yes, we have good chance. Or, or chance is going to be very, very, very poor. All right, should we check out the Chuck happy or salty meter? Oh, they did it. They did it, Steve. What do you mean? Oh, wow, because I was talking with Steve and, and, and Alejandro, and I go, oh, they better put the meter. All right, the meter is up. Let's see how Chuck's feeling. We just debuted this the other day. Where am I feeling right now? Yeah, that's about right. What's the meh? I'm meh. I'm like, eh, eh, bad game. Let's get, get them tomorrow. Ah, <laughs> that meter went up, 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 up. What does that even mean? Translate. Uh, that meter, I hope it's, that meter is not going like very bad because they don't need to play bad against Detroit Tigers. No, no, no. I mean, if they lose, well, the game's on Apple tomorrow, but if they lose a couple more games, I will not be meh. Okay. Tonight they, I'm meh. They, t tomorrow, Jason, I'm going to bring the meter when we play golf. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. So when when, hey, uh, when I, somebody curse more than me in the golf course, they tell you all about me. the outplay. That was me. <laughs> I I I'll admit it live on television. I swore more than Ozzy again today, today on the golf course. One person on this set threw his golf cl golf club about forty yards, and it wasn't Ozzy. I never throw my clubs. No, because I, I'll be out of clubs. <laughs> Is that every time you bat, I throw my club up. Oh, oh, oh my God, I don't have any club left. Yeah. Uh, it was a rough day all around for me, let me tell you. Oh, gee. Okay, I say a secret. What's Steve, secret? I say, Chuck, you get up at 5.30 in the morning, walk your dog, and come all the way here to play like this? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. Oh, God. But you know right. what? I was amongst friends. We love it. We had a great time. Nelly's a good golfer. What's his nickname for Nelly? Fairway Nelly. Fairway Nelly. He's the guy who works here. Jeff Nelson, longtime producer. We call him Fairway Nelly because he's always in the fairway. Yes, he was. We got to move on with the show, unfortunately. Uh, or unless you want to talk about my golf game more. No, we talk about that. Yeah. Here's Giolito the field coverage pitching recap brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Uh, Giolito, the Sox's most consistent starter, gives up four runs in three and two thirds, seven walks. But let's look at today's great escape because we had two of them. He wasn't feeling it. Looked good in the first inning, but here we go. Second inning, Tim Anderson is going to misplay this ground ball. Giolito is in a jam. But he gets out of it, so you're thinking, okay, maybe this is going to be the Sox day. This is going to be Giolito's day, even though he doesn't have his best stuff. You know, it's funny thing because those double plays help him a lot. And people say defense. I don't know exactly what Tim was doing. The team was, uh, look at this, a sharp, a sharp line drive, turn two, it's out of the inning. And uh, there's something of, you know, one mistake going to another, Giolito with walking people. And by the way, I got to give credit to Detroit Tigers. Because they have been a lot of patience on the plate yes. all year long. They don't have big numbers, but
but they really make those guys work. All right, so third inning, Giolito loads the bases this time. He had a pitch clock violation. He was on the ropes again. But the Tigers are going to help him out with a horrible base running mistake. I mean, the fact that Giolito, the way he was pitching through three innings, did not give up a run. This was a shock to me. I thought, he did. I thought they already have a chance yeah. to score more runs because he was very, very inconsistent with his strike zone. He was all over play. Uh, he was having trouble with high fastballs. Everything, because it's, it's the key for him is a, a high fastball and good changeup. Yeah. And today they don't have either one. And here's the uh, double play. I don't know what uh, Green was thinking there, but we'll take it. So Sox don't give up any runs after all that through three innings. So I was thinking, okay, this is going to be Giolito's day. Fourth inning, Giolito's in trouble again. Two walks, a double, two singles. I'm watching this, and I'm thinking maybe they're going to pull him. What did you think about the decision to keep him in there through all this? Well, they tried to. This is the. This is his guy. He turned the ball very well this month. Last few days, it's been great. And you don't want to use the bullpen without reason. And you have a reason. You know the problem about this pitch? He threw a breaking ball right before that pitch. And he come back with the same breaking ball. I think the, the, you know, the hit is going to have a, a pretty good look out of the breaking ball. Yeah. So I know he's been their most consistent starter. And you're probably trying to save the bullpen. But... You know, we're going to hear from G, uh, we're going to hear from Grafal here on the show, and like to know his thoughts on it. I could see both sides of it because you're thinking, well, he, you know, this is his game. It's still a close game. Keep him in there. All he needs to do is get one out here, and we're in a whole different situation. It's but in thing, the end, that made him pay. There's one thing about it: when you see the guy struggle, throw the, he just struggle, and you give up home runs. Yeah. You're around the play, you're there. but when you struggle, you were just walking people. Then your decision, you got to make that decision right away. You say, you know what, you don't have it with him. Let's go deal with the bullpen, see what happens. Yeah. So, four runs across. Giolito's taken out of the game, and his seven walks tie a career high. He had gone six innings or more and eight straight starts. That was the kind of role he was on. He's the first Sox starter, not counting the one bullpen day they had a couple days ago, to go less than six innings in a game since May the 12th, 12 games ago. So why did the White Sox go on this run? Because of their starting pitching. They didn't have the starting pitching today, and they didn't have the offense either. So uh, Alex Fayedo, right, the Sox faced him last June. Last June it was the worst start of his young career. He gave up seven runs on nine hits in three innings. Mancata, your pick to click, hit a three-run homer in the first inning. Oh, I don't know, he forgot about that. They don't have the video to watch that. You know, the guys make the adjustment. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think the pitching, you know what I mean? Detroit Tigers, in its, it's in second place for a reason. Oh, what, the first reason is because this, this division is bad. They've been playing pretty good baseball lately. Yeah, they have been. So... Uh, offensively, the Sox just didn't have, I mean, I don't know what it is. Is it a bad approach? Is it good Fayedo? Like, what was going on there? Both. Both. Both one. You know what I mean? Fayedo is like, just go down and throw the ball good. Sneaky fastball. Very sneaky. But you know what? You can't hit that pitch. You don't have no clue what you're doing. You know what I mean? A lot of chasing. It, it, besides that, it's big time chasing. It's like, like an April emotion. Mm -hmm. April emotion. I think the soon you're chasing that and pitching fine now, you guys do. You guys open to swing everything. Now they can make that decision. Then I say, okay, you know what? I'm going to spend the strike zone to see you guys can help me a little bit more. But credit to Alex. He threw the ball very good today. Yeah, I mean, we're actually seeing some good. Okay, those are good pitches right there. Those are yeah. really good pitches. I think, you know what? <laughs> As the game went on, he got better, felt better, and it was tougher to hit. And you see how the uh, Pantera swing that pitch? Yeah. He was right there, and he even see the ball. When Pantera is good. You go there, get deeper, and hit the ball to right field. That's what this guy is the best at his at-bats. All right. Gavin Sheets, that's one of the few highlights for the White Sox here tonight. I believe the eye pitch machine made it to Detroit because last year he had 14 homers at home, only one on the road. This year he's got the eye pitch machine. Bam! He's got more home runs on the road than at home this year. How about Sheets? Can you let your teammates barrel the ice beam machine, whatever you guys call it? Eye pitch machine. Yes. Ooh. Let him borrow them. Yeah. Because today, they, they will need it that for tomorrow. Yeah, he's crushed that he, one. He crushed that one. He's been really impressive this year. So uh, props to Sheets for getting the home run, keeping the Sox in the game. That made it a 4-2 game. All right, we're going to break here on White Sox Post Game Live. Coming up, the speed of Jake Berger. 
the pitch Gregory Santos threw tonight, which was really impressive. And we're going to open up the vault, uh, the vault, Ozzie Guillen versus Randy Johnson. This is a reason. Well, it's not that late. It's only 845, but this is a reason to stay and watch. You want to see Ozzie Guillen versus Randy Johnson. It is tremendous, tremendous video. And we're going to hear from Peter Rafal. That's coming up next.